Hey, hello. You're stuck in trouble with Wolf Gorlick. A few minutes riffing and IT and IT security. Today, looking at honeypots, distractors, deception technology, and other things that slow down uh, or to confuse the bad guys. And what makes for a good honeypot and what makes for a not so good honeypot. I'm doing some work with a university. Basically, their um, their cybersecurity course, their strategic course, uh, helping with um, developing the examinations and whatnot. And uh, it's actually turning out to be quite educational for me. I like <laughs> learning like instructional design. And there is a whole like art and science to writing questions, which I never knew. Um, so if you think of like the answers, right? The right answer should be pretty apparent if you read the material. Uh, the wrong answer, which could be called a distractor, should not be readily apparent. In other words, it should blend in. There's a thing called parallelism, whereas like, you know, the sentences are structured the same, the length is about the same, the words look about the same, right? Such that if you're looking at multiple choice, it's not really clear what is the right answer unless you actually have studied and have that inside knowledge. And that made me think about honeypots. So the tip for you is this, where a lot of organizations fail at honeypots, is by not looking at them as distractors, by not looking at it in terms of parallelism, by not looking at it in terms of really replicating the environment. They telegraph the fact it's a honeypot. You're looking at a, uh, a server and since you scan it, you're like, ah, look, it's running Linux. And it's got a file share on it. And SQL. And a web app. And another web app. And Tomcat. And now you're saying, this doesn't seem right. You know what I mean? Linux servers usually don't have Windows file shares on them. Aha! The trick to making a really good honeypot is have it truly blend in and look like part of the environment, right? Look like just another replication of a server instance or um, operational technology or OT or whatever it may be. And so oftentimes we forget that. We forget the importance of parallelism. And therefore, when, a, when someone is on the network and they see it, it's pretty readily identifiable. Now, we're at a little bit of a disadvantage because if you go back to like the multiple choice example, you know, there's usually like one right answer and four wrong answers, you know, right? So it's like one right, four questions, three wrong, 75% chance that you're going to go down the wrong path. In a honeypot scenario, you probably have like a thousand right boxes for every one honeypot. So it's not exactly the same type of situation. But if we can make it blend in a little bit more, we can make it a little bit more um, realistic, we can increase the chance of the attacker going down that path and thereby diverting their uh, activities to a spot where we can catch them, detect, respond, and do everything that uh, we need to do. Um, something I've been thinking about. What about you? Have you had some fun with honeypots? Got a good story? Hit me up in comments or social media. Cheers.